Hey all, it's Linda. Welcome back to my channel. So I know I say before every video, like, I'm so excited to be filming today's video. But dudes, I haven't been this excited to film a video in a while. I am so pumped and you already know from the title, but today I am going to be reviewing and trying on some of the items from Melt Cosmetics new holiday collection, the Amor y Mariposas collection. I'm so sorry in advance if my Spanish is butchered to all holy hell. I am not a Spanish speaker, but I am gonna try my best for you. I am like buzzing with energy. I did not purchase the whole collection this time. I have purchased whole holiday collections in the past. I did purchase the entire Beetlejuice collection. I purchased most of the Amor Eterno collection, but with this, I just purchased the eye palette, the face palette, and two of the gel liners. So today we're gonna to be doing a bit of a deeper dive into these. I wanna to talk to you about the packaging. I wanna to talk to you about the price. The price is definitely something we need to discuss. And then I'm gonna show you swatches and we're gonna try two looks with the eyeshadow palette, which is something I never do. We're gonna test out the cheek palette. I'm gonna let you know all of my completely honest thoughts. I did purchase all of this with my own money, so you are going to get my blatantly honest thoughts as you always do on my channel, but let's jump right into this. If you're unfamiliar with Melt Cosmetics as a whole, they are a completely cruelty-free brand and they are woman-owned. Two women named Dana Bomar and Laura Ariano. They are both actual goddesses. You should be following them on Instagram. This collection was very, very special, especially to Laura. This has great meaning for her. And this basically was centered sort of around butterflies and the Mexican ideology that basically says, if you see a butterfly, that is a loved one who has passed that is coming back to let you know that they are okay and to still be with you in this life. So I do really think that's very beautiful and I do appreciate that so much thought and love was put into the idea surrounding this collection. Now, let's talk price. We need to jump right into this. So the PR box, which I will put a picture of right here, was $450. Now it was marked down to $425 when it first went on sale, the whole $25 savings. This was extraordinary. Last year, the Beetlejuice collection, I paid $350 for it out of my own pocket, I will be honest, and that was hefty for me, but I sort of understood because with that, you were getting three liquid lipsticks, you were getting three bullet lipsticks, you were getting three liquid liners, you were getting a mirror, you were getting a pouch, you were getting brushes, you were getting two eyeshadow palettes, and this PR box that was absolutely amazing. And there was licensing fees because it was Beetlejuice. This collection, I do not understand where that price came from. Now, if you price the pieces out individually, they were also still fairly expensive, but not completely out of the realm of possibility. The eyeshadow palette, which is also a pressed pigment palette, and don't worry, we're gonna look inside, was retailing for $70. The face palette, which is the first time they've had a face palette, was retailing for $58. Everything seemed fairly normal, but... When Mel released the PR box and they took it from 450 to 425, they also discounted a whole bunch of other stuff on their site. Everything was discounted. It was fantastic, right? That's so good. But they decided to release all the individual items the following week, despite saying that it wasn't going to be released for three weeks originally. I personally think that maybe the PR box didn't sell so well because of the pricing. But when all the individual items went on sale, you could get an additional 25% off everything. Plus, there were bundles. So for example, these two together would have normally been $128 if you had bought them separately. Together, they were selling for $95. And then you got 25% off of that, bringing this to a bit over $70. So you were paying for the full price palette and then almost essentially getting this for free. It all was crazy. One user pointed out on Twitter, and I'm gonna put the screenshot right here. I unfortunately don't have the name of the person who pointed this out, but they basically took the entire collection with the 25% off and added it up, and you could get almost the entire collection for under $300. So why were they charging $450 for the PR kit? Unique to the PR kit was the box, which was absolutely beautiful, and some glitter lipsticks. For $125, you got a box and glitter lipsticks. I just, I think that this one, they didn't quite think through when it came to the price. I will say that. Plus the eyeshadow palette, 
is $70. It is the most expensive palette they have ever had. There are 20 grams of product in this palette, which brings the cost per gram to $3.50. For a reference, here are some of the other price per gram of Melt palettes. The Gemini palette is $3.09 per gram. The Rust palette, $2.99 per gram, and Mary Jane was $3 per gram. So even broken down per gram, this is the most expensive palette Melt has ever created. So the big question, is it worth it? I am not someone who shies away from spending money on makeup. It is my vice. It is my happy place. So if the quality is there, it's worth it to me. So let's start breaking into the packaging, the swatches, and all the goodies. Let's start with the pressed pigment palette. So the outer packaging is absolutely stunning. You have this beautiful gold embossed cardboard packaging. And when you tilt it at certain lights, the rainbow catches. You can see it in the spokes coming out of the heart, out of the butterfly. It really is just a beautiful holographic package. Then we need to talk briefly about something else. Oh my God, so I was so excited. I opened it up and I was like, oh, it's red inside. And I touched it, it is flocked. It's basically like crushed velvet, it's flocked. Why do brands keep doing this to me? I just had an Ipsy Glam bag unboxing where it was velvet. Like, I can't touch this stuff. It literally makes me nauseous. Am I still gonna keep the box? Yes, because I have issues. What I thought was interesting is when you take the palette out of that box, it looks nothing like the actual box packaging. It's still absolutely beautiful. So you do have this half matte, half glossy cover with this insanely stunning design covered in monarch butterflies. It is just really, really beautiful. And then you open up the palette. So you have 20 shades here in different textures, mostly matte and shimmer. I don't really see any satins in here or anything like that. You just pretty much have matte and shimmer. We have 14 mattes and six shimmer shades. This is absolutely stunning. And every one of the matte shades is pressed with a butterfly imprint. It is just really, really beautiful. I was really impressed when I opened this up. Before we get into some swatches, let's take a look at the blush palette. So this is the Monarcha blush palette. Again, we have that same beautiful outer packaging with the gold shiny finish and the rainbow holographic image on the front. But this one, which is interesting, is when you open up the packaging, it is that same bright, vibrant gold as the outer packaging. So I do like how they kind of kept that more uniform. Now, don't get me wrong, these two look beautiful together, but just very different. And when you open it up, I was really impressed with the attention to detail on this. So you do have six blush shades, and I think only three of them are matte, the ones on the outer edge here. The other three, the lightest three, do have some sort of shimmer to them. The embossing on these is next level. So you do have the outer packaging with the heart and the butterfly inside. It is just so beautiful. The Again, the attention to detail is just next level. Two other things that I picked up were the gel liners. I picked up two out of the three gel liners in this collection. So we're gonna start with Estrella. Estrella, again, these come in the beautiful same packaging. This is a metallic, stunning gold. I knew I needed this as soon as they announced it. I haven't even touched mine yet. These are just so, so stunning. Every swatch I've seen has been perfect. I'm just in love. And the other liner might just be the star of the show. So again, you have that same beautiful packaging with the gold lid, the butterflies on the outer edge of the lid. And Calibri is this beautiful, deep metallic teal. It's just, there are no words for how gorgeous this is. It almost looks forest green in some lights. It looks blue. It looks regular green. I just... I would like to eat this, but I probably shouldn't. You probably shouldn't eat makeup. I'm just gonna throw that out there in case you needed that PSA. All right, now that we've talked about the packaging, let's look at some swatches. First, I want to show you these swatches that I already took of the pressed pigment palette. I took them here in my studio lighting, but I also took them outside so you could see what they look like in natural sunlight. I was so impressed with these swatches. I was surprised by these swatches. I was nervous that the mattes wouldn't be as pigmented as I wanted them to be, that they would be patchy in any way. And also I do confess that the second shade I swatched did not go on my arm very well at all. It was a little bit patchy. And the fact that that was the second shade, I was nervous to swatch the remaining 18. 
They were all stunning. The metallics in this palette are next level with the way they swatch. They almost feel creamy and you need such a light touch to get full opacity, to get full pigment, to get full shine. These are so incredibly beautiful and they are not like some melt formulas in the past where it's puffed out of the pan. These are pressed in there so nicely. I just can't even fathom how, I, I, I just can't even talk about how impressed I was. The mattes, especially those dark, beautiful, rich, jewel tone mattes are some of the most unique I have in my collection at this point. I can't wait to put this on my eyeballs. As far as the blush palette, here are some swatches of that as well. I was impressed with this. The only shade that I was not impressed with was the deepest shade, which is, I believe it's pronounced Comingo. It did not swatch as deeply as I needed it to. With that being said, if you are a skin tone that is any deeper than mine, some of these might just straight up not show up on you. This I do not think is necessarily deep skin tone friendly. I do think these are beautiful. I think I am personally gonna get a lot of use out of this, but just keep that in mind. Okay, I've waited long enough. You have made me wait long enough and you should be ashamed of yourself. I wanna put this on my eyeballs. So I, for the first time, am gonna do two looks, one palette. I've never done this before because I am not a makeup artist. I just like having fun with makeup, but I really do wanna play with as many of these colors as possible and just let you know what I think of them. I know myself, I'm not gonna be able to put like 10 colors on each eye, but I really do wanna to try to have some fun with this and do two looks. I think for this first look, I definitely wanna dip into some of these purples and these kind of warmer tones here and like these deeper tones and this shimmer, which is Mariposa, which is by far my favorite color in the whole palette, spoiler alert. And then maybe for the second look, I'll dig into those greens. But first, I wanna start with these purples. I'm going in with my Me To You eye primer. This I got in an Ipsy bag and I actually really like it for brighter shadows. We are going right in with Nube. I have to say this is one of those shades that I was super impressed with because this is a vegan palette. So the fact that they got such a vibrant matte purple, look at that. Look at the intense pigment right there from one swipe in the palette and just kind of pressing this into my lid. I was so impressed. So I would say take your time with this particular shade in building it up because otherwise it might go patchy if you're trying to move a little too fast like I do. I will say one thing this palette is missing for me is like one light shade that I could use to kind of blend out my brow bone, but I have that in plenty of other palettes. So it's not a deal breaker for me. I just would have liked that. For this being the very first shade, holy crap. Going in with Maria and a smaller pointed brush. And this color I'm just using to deepen the outer V. And blend that a little bit into the crease. I'm getting virtually no fallout. And also with these shadows, just know a little bit goes a very long way. With each of these colors, I have dipped only once into the pan and then just like pressed it onto my eyes and I'm blending it out. By the way, if you're seeing any patchiness right there, that is my skin's fault, not the eyeshadow fault. I always have issues with that. If you've watched my channel before, I have a kind of scarred spot on my eyebrow there, so I have to work extra hard to blend that out. Now it's time for Mariposa, the star of the show. I'm gonna take a little bit of my NYX glitter glue and put it on the back of my hand. Just pick up a little bit of that. Then picking up Mariposa. Oh. It's practically neon. So I'm gonna take Abuelita, which is this beautiful peachy pink. I'm gonna take it very, very lightly. I'm tapping off like 90% of what's on there on this fluffy brush. And I wanna put that just right on the outer edges of that purple. Taking those same colors under my eyes, starting with Nube, then a tiny bit of Maria just on the lash line. Okay, before I do my liner and lashes and everything, I want to try something. I want to take a tiny bit, look at that. Oh, this is the Estrella Gel Liner. I'm taking the tiniest bit of it on a flat brush. I'm going to pop that right on the inner corner. Oh, look at that. It's so... Mm. Just 
just adds a little something something. I'm gonna hop off camera real quick and I'm going to do my liner, my lashes, and I will be back and we will test out the blush palette. All right, I decided to go with a sort of bold, very lit moment. This is discontinued, unfortunately, but this is the ColourPop Lippy Sticks in Ellery. I really like the way that they look together, but now I want to go into the blush palette. So what would go best with this? I think I'm gonna try Vita, which is right here in the center. This is a quite light shade. Let's see how it shows. Oh, I have mascara all the way over here. Oh wow, so this blush definitely has a pretty good amount of gold shimmer in it. It's very pretty. I wonder if it would make a better blush topper though. All right, so here is the first look. I really do like the way it came out. I do feel that that purple color needs just a little bit of extra attention just to make sure it's not going to go on patchy, but I really, really like this. That that orange, that orange is next level and I really love the pop of gold. I'm kind of in love with this look. I really like it. Let me know what you think in the comments down below, but we are going to uh, have a second look in this video. So stay tuned for that. Okay, before we hop into that second look, I did wanna pop back on. Forgive me if the lighting is a little bit different. I filmed my video at 8.30 a.m. and right now it is 2.30 p.m. So I had the makeup on for about six hours. It definitely, I don't know how much you can see, it definitely did stain my eyelids. That is not uncommon with pressed pigments, especially personally for me, whenever I wear purple eyeshadow, it always <laughs> stains, but I just wanted you to know and to be aware in case that's something you're curious about. Okay, we are back for look number two. I haven't done braids like this since before I got my shag cut and it, it's, it's feeling very weird, but we're gonna run with it. So for this look, I definitely wanna play with these greens and blues, but I think it's time. I need to finally, I need to finally break into it, okay? It can't look perfect forever. We're gonna use the Calibri liner first. I'm taking a more stiff brush and dipping in and starting off with a little bit, oh my God, do you see how metallic? I knew this would be such a favorite. This is just so metallic and so beautiful. This could easily just be all you use for a look. I wanna start by taking Carino and I just wanna put this in my crease to blend that out. Now I will say this is the color that when I swatched it, it did not do very well. Does that mean it won't do well on my eyes? Not at all. So that's why I'm really curious to try it. I do wanna give this a chance because it looks beautiful. This color is so interesting. It's like mint but not, I can't explain it, but it's really, it's pretty and it actually is going on beautifully. There's no patchiness at all. It's blending out nicely. So that's why I love to do swatches, but also test things on my eyes, of course. Now you may buy an eyeshadow palette just to swatch it on your arm and wear it like that all day, but personally I don't. Going in with Sentimientos. I should learn Spanish. I'm going to just plop this on the inner and outer corner of my eyes into the crease and I'm gonna plop this color on the very outer corner did you notice that I, I didn't even try to say the name of this one I'll put it on the screen right here oh that's a beautiful color that deepens it up nicely and then Miko come and just like I did with the first look putting a little bit of the NYX glitter glue on the back of my hand and dipping my brush in. I'm just patting that right on the center. I wanna try instead to use my finger for this side. It's about the same effect. And right in the center, I wanna take some tequila. Tequila, I can say. See how that added just like a little bit of wet look? Oh my God. I'm gonna take Sentimentos, Sentimentios <laughs> under the eyes and then Carino on the fluffier brush to blend that out. And I think I'm done with shadow. So I'm gonna hop off real quick. I'm gonna do my lashes and liner and I will be right back. Okay, I wanted to keep the focus on the eyes today. So the lips are super, super neutral. It's pretty much just a tinted lip oil and some lip liner. 
But now let's go into the Monarcha blush palette. So with the first look, I used Vita. Let me see. I want to use something bolder. Maybe, you know what? Let's do it. Let's go right into Comingo. Comingo. <laughs> now it looks scary here, but when I did a swatch, it wasn't scary. So let's see. Okay. <laughs> That's more reasonable. That's a little crazy. I'm just gonna <laughs> blend that out a bit. Now I don't know if that's the best color with this look, but it still is really pretty. You know what? Let's go ahead and put a little bit of um, Milagritos on the top of that as sort of a little bit of a topper. Oh, that I really like. All right, so we are finished with two looks from the brand new Melt Holiday Collection, Amor y Mariposos, and I want to give you my first impressions. Let's start with the pressed pigment palette. So as I mentioned, this is the most expensive palette Melt has come out with per gram, price per gram. So do I think it's worth it? I do. I'm sorry. I do. I think it's absolutely beautiful. I was concerned at first with the pan size. I was concerned with the pricing. I was concerned with all of it. I really do think it's worth it. All of these colors pack a punch because they are pressed pigments as opposed to eyeshadows. So you need to dip your brush in once, gently tap it off, and then it will create a whole eye look. I have a feeling that I will never be able to pan any of these shades, no matter how much I love them, no matter how beautiful I think they are if I were to use them every day, because a little bit goes such a long way and is so pigmented. The only color I was worried about in the palette was Carino up here and it went on beautifully. That is the mint that's like above this and I love it. Like I love it. It is unlike anything that's in my collection. I am kind of blown away by this. By far my favorite color is Mariposas. It's like just the most bright, beautiful, shimmery orange that I've ever seen. I, I'm in love with this. As far as the blush palette, I like this more than I was expecting. So this is something that I was on the fence about buying, to be honest, because I've been way more into cream blushes than powder blushes. These went on beautifully. And I really, uh, my only gripe, okay, my only gripe is that these two shades, Vida and Feliz, they are way too similar to be in the palette together. They are almost identical. Let's see if I can do a swatch. So here we have Vida, here we have Feliz. Yes, there are slight differences, but I really don't think it's enough to justify both being in the same palette, especially considering that there are only six shades overall. Now, that being said, I really do think all of these colors are gorgeous. I can see myself getting far more use out of some of these than others. Like, for example, I am not a bright pink girl when it comes to blush, but it could have, you know, its place in my makeup collection because I don't have anything like that. So, these I think I'm going to get a lot of use out of in the summertime and these will be year round for me because they are just those shimmery peachy blushes. I am really happy with this purchase. I would suggest if you are thinking of getting the palette overall, then get the bundle with this. Save yourself some money because if you do that, this is only $25 instead of $58. So I think that that is a really good deal overall if you're going to grab the palette. As far as the gel liners, I just adore the formula of all of Melt's gel liners. I haven't had a single one that I haven't liked, and these are no exception. So I used Calibri today as a base for my shadow. It's beautiful. This could easily just be a put it on and go out the door thing. This could be a one shadow look. It's so stunning. And Estrella, the gold, that pop of gold stayed on my inner corner all day until I took it off. I did leave it on for about six, six and a half hours before I took it off, but it stayed there. It didn't budge and it was so beautiful and it was such a cool little pop of gold. I have a feeling that I'm going to be using these two so often. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I want you to let me know in the comments down below, are you thinking of picking up anything from this collection? Have you picked up anything from this collection? What do you think of the pricing? What do you think about the pressed pigments? Let me know it all. Tell me in the comments below. Overall, I am so happy to have these in my collection. I did not personally need the entire PR kit. It was beautiful. I wouldn't have turned it down if it was, you know, sent to me. But to be honest, like the brushes, they were beautiful. I didn't need them. The hand mirror, I now have two of these already. I didn't need a third. So I'm not 
as bummed to not have the whole thing in my collection, you know, as much as I am a collector of makeup, but I am so happy with the pieces I picked up. If you like this video, I would love if you'd give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel. I do put out several videos a week, which are makeup reviews and unboxings, all sorts of good stuff. You all can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Those are all glitter fallout. And as always and forever, you, I'm talking to you talking directly to you. You are super freaking rock stars. I love you so much with my whole heart and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.